Hey dudes, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video we'll be checking out molecular shapes. And this is kind of just a quick guide to how to figure out the shapes of molecules. It all stems from what's known as the VSEPR theory. The VSEPR theory is the valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That's right, it's valence shell electrons. That means your outer shell electrons. Valence shell electron pair repulsion theory. That means your outer shell electrons repel each other. And therefore, they're going to give what we call predictable molecular shapes. And over here, these are just some of the shapes that molecules can form. And my goal is that when you leave the lesson, you should be able to predict what shape a given molecule will form. The first shape we're going to look at is known as tetrahedral. Now, tetra is a prefix that technically means four, like tetris. Um, in this case, what you're going to see is coming off of the central atom, I have one, two, three, four. Four bonds. And that's what you have going on down here. You have a central atom, and there's four bonds coming off there. Now, you see this typically in group four or 14 elements. They have four outer shell electrons, and therefore will we'll take four more electrons to fill up their outer shell. So silicon is another element, in addition to carbon, that can come away with four electrons on the outside such as this. So if you see four of any element around something, you know this shape has to be tetrahedral. That's the only shape it can possibly be. Every single bond has a bond angle of 109.5 degrees. The next shape is called trigonal planar. In this shape, you see we have every bond is 120 degrees apart from each other. This is typical of group 3 or 13 elements, and specifically, we're really only going to see this in the element boron. Boron is an exception to the octet rule, but it only needs 6 electrons in the outer shell. And what you see down here is boron trifluoride, where one boron is bonded to 3 different fluorines. And you're going to also notice here, a key thing is that there are no unshared electron pairs. There's no unshared electron pairs on the central atom. All its electrons are used up. Therefore, when it spreads apart, it can spread apart to 120 degrees in every single direction. So once again, this is typical only of element boron, for the most part, that does this. Trigonal pyramidal is another shape very similar to trigonal planar. And the big difference here is that on these elements, you're going to have an unshared pair of electrons. And that unshared pair of electrons on these group 5 or 15 elements is going to repel. It's going to repel the other electrons down. It's going to repel that bonded. This is a bonded pair of electrons right here. It's going to repel them downwards. So this little nub up here is on a model, a way of representing an electron pair. And that's kind of what you see right here. So either phosphorus or nitrogen could be the central atom in a trigonal pyramidal situation. And you have three fluorines or three iodines or three chlorines, whatever you want to put on the outside. If you have three of it coming around it, you're going to end up with a trigonal pyramidal if you have this unshared pair of electrons. Now, so what's the difference between these two we just saw? We saw trigonal planar and trigonal pyramidal. They both have something in common. They both have three things, three elements coming off of this. So we saw like boron trifluoride, and then we also saw nitrogen trifluoride. And there's a difference in the shapes. Nitrogen shape was the pyramidal. Boron was trigonal planar. The big difference is that nitrogen on the central atom had that extra unshared pair of electrons. And that caused the repulsion of the other electron pairs going downward in a pyramidal shape. And we don't have that in boron. In the absence of this, these guys down here would spring upwards and form 120 20 degree bond angles. The bent structure is something you typically see out of group six elements. Group six elements have all two unshared pair of electrons around their central atom. Check out water down here. Okay, H2O, dihydrogen monoxide. I have two unshared pairs of electrons, and what those unshared pairs of electrons do, they kind of sit around here somewhere, but they also repel. They're going to repel the bonded electrons downward. Bear in mind that these electrons have a negative charge. 
and they're going to repel these negatively charged electrons downward too. And what we end up with in water is 104.5 degrees, but otherwise you would see 109.5 degrees if it wasn't H2O. And so this is a bent structure, not a linear. A lot of times people throw linear out here, but this is not a linear structure. It's bent due to the presence of unshared pairs of electrons around your central atom. Linear, in this case, is CO2. So anytime you have three elements, you have two choices. It's going to be bent or linear. The reason why this is going to be linear and spread out to 180 degrees, which is a straight line, is because there is an absence. There's no unshared pair of electrons on the central atom. All the electrons have gone into the bonds right here and right here. Similar, silicon forms this bond with oxygen, silicon, diiodide, silicon, dioxide, <laughs> silicon dioxide will form this where there's two double bonds as well, and there's zero no unshared pairs of electrons around the central atom. Therefore, they can spread out to 180 degrees to maximum distance. So what was the difference between having three elements in a row? Well, when I have three elements in a row, as both of these do, I have two options. I was either bent or linear. And the reason why carbon dioxide went to linear was because there was a missing. There's no extra pairs of electrons. Therefore, they can spread out to 180 degrees. Bent, you have to recall, has extra electrons that are not being used. And so these electrons down here cannot spread apart and go upwards because if you do, you get repelled by this pair of negative electrons, which is pushing you downward into a bent structure. So that's one of the key things here. And a lot of students get confused on is CO2 bent or is it linear in the same way with H2O? You know, uh, one of the very common things with H2O is to draw the Lewis dot structure in a straight line. And honestly, I don't have a problem with that because the Lewis dot structure is just trying to express what's in the molecule, where the electrons are, but it can be misleading. It almost makes it look like it is linear. But just recall, anytime you have an unshared pair of electrons, you're going to have a bending in your structure, either a pyramidal, but in this case, a bent. The last molecules we'll look at today involve linear. Anytime you have two elements, just like O2, N2, F2, etc., the only possible shape it can be is going to be a straight line, which is linear. And they're 180 degrees apart from each other. There is no way you can escape this. There's only one possible shape. So anyway, guys, this is just simply a quick guide to molecular shapes based upon the fact that electrons repel each other and give predictable molecular shapes according to the VSEPR theory. All right, dudes, hope it was helpful. Have a great day.